Hello and a very good morning from Poole in the south of England. Now today I'll be travelling with South Western Railway up to London Waterloo aboard one of their class 444 Desiro units. Should be a nice little ride up to London even if the weather down here on the Dorset coast is far from the best. Hopefully that should improve as we head north up to London. So yeah, do come along for the ride. I'm just walking to Poole Station just now and yeah, without further ado, let's go to London. But before we get the video started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Poole Railway Station is located just a stone's throw away from the town centre. It is situated on the southwestern main line and is one of four railway stations serving the Dorset town, the others being Hamworthy to the west and Parkston and Branksome to the east. The station building is very small and features just a ticket machine and a ticket office as well as a small cafe. There are also a few departure boards with my train, the 097 to London Waterloo, currently showing as on time. All services to and from Poole are operated by South Western Railway. Through these doors and back out into the rain you'll find the platforms. We're currently on Platform 1 which is served by trains heading towards London, with Platform 2 being served by services heading towards Weymouth. Notice how there are three rails instead of two. Well, the raised third rail is electrified and the trains have a number of shoes which are used to draw power from the rail. Our train arrives from Weymouth on time. The service to London is initially formed of this 5 car long class 444 Siemens De Zero electric multiple unit. I say initially as we'll join up with another 5 coaches in Bournemouth. These trains were built in Vienna and entered passenger service in 2004. The class 444s have a top speed of 100 miles per hour or 161 kilometers an hour. I'll be travelling in standard class or second class today, with seating being laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. No seat reservations are offered on this train, so I can just choose my seat as I board. If possible, I'd highly recommend sitting on the right hand side of the train in order to catch the best of the scenery. Anyway, before we set off, I think it's time we took a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us travelling northeast from Poole via the likes of Bournemouth, Southampton, Winchester and Basingstoke before arriving into London, for a total distance travelled of 114 miles or 183 kilometres. Scheduled travel time today is 2 hours and 12 minutes and our top speed will be 100 miles per hour. And we depart Poole bang on time at 7 minutes past 9. Now that we're underway, I think it's time for a seat tour. For a standard class seat, I thought that legroom was rather good. The airline style seats each feature a small, albeit sturdy tray table. You'll find a plug socket by each window seat and these have always worked just fine in my experience. Lastly, I think the seats themselves offer a great level of comfort. A good amount of padding is on offer and the slightly winged headrests are a very nice addition in my opinion. Our first calling point after Poole is Bournemouth. As with many towns in the area, Bournemouth is a quite popular seaside resort. As I mentioned earlier, we'll join with another 5 car unit here before continuing on to London as a 10 carriage train.
as well as South Western Railway services, Bournemouth is also served by direct trains to Manchester, courtesy of Cross Country. Our next calling point is Pokesdown, whose station also serves nearby Boscombe. This is one of a number of stations that we'll call at today where the train is too long for the platform. As we depart, be sure to keep an eye out for the lovely mural painted on the wall of the opposing platform. Next up is Christchurch, which is of course twinned with Christchurch, in New Zealand that is. Maybe one day I'll visit their Kiwi counterparts to try out their Transalpine service. Eventually we call at Brockenhurst, which is gateway to the New Forest National Park. Shortly after departing Brockenhurst, we find ourselves fast approaching the city of Southampton. As we make our way into Southampton, we pass the city's famous docks. Historically, the port of Southampton was a hub for long-distance ocean liner services from the UK, with the likes of Cunard and White Star Line connecting the country to the New World. Notable ships to regularly serve the port included the RMS Lusitania, RMS Olympic and RMS Queen Mary, and is of course where one of Olympic's sister ships, the RMS Titanic, set sail from on her ill-fated maiden voyage. Nowadays, the port is the UK's busiest cruise liner terminal, as well as the country's second busiest container port. A few moments later, we arrive at the city's main station, Southampton Central. As we make our way out of the city, we pass Northam Carriage Servicing Depot, which is Southwestern Railway's main depot for maintaining its Class 444s as well as their Class 450s, which are the high density commuter version of the train we're on. I'll be covering one of SWR's Class 450s in a future review. Our next calling point is Southampton Airport Parkway, which, as the name suggests, serves the adjacent airport. About 10 minutes later, we call at Winchester. Believe it or not, this was once the capital of England, as well as the country's most important city, prior to the Norman Conquest of 1066. As you can see, much of the trip is spent travelling at or close to top speed. Our 
Our penultimate intermediate stop today is Basingstoke. Once a small market town, Basingstoke is now the third largest settlement in the county of Hampshire, behind only Southampton and Portsmouth. From Basingstoke, we'll run non-stop through to Clapham Junction. Okay, I think it's about time we went for a wonder. A number of bicycle spaces can be found throughout the train. While these can be used at no extra charge and without a reservation, peak time restrictions do apply on weekdays. I must say, I think the interiors of these trains look very smart indeed, with the dark blue working very well in my opinion. These trains were last refurbished about three or four years ago. I also like that the saloon is separated from the vestibules. While perhaps a small detail, I think it provides a much quieter and more peaceful journey for those travelling longer distances. While I think these trains are fantastic overall, one major letdown is that space for storing luggage is somewhat limited. The overhead racks are rather small and there are no stacks for storing larger items of luggage. It's not uncommon to see suitcases blocking the aisle on these trains when they're busy. The second coach from one end of each unit has a large accessible toilet as well as a couple of spaces for wheelchair users. And at one end of each unit there's a small first class section, although it's also in a 2 plus 2 configuration so I don't really see the point in upgrading. One cool feature of these trains is that it's possible to move between units through the area where the driver's cabs are. From experience I've always found the front unit on this service to be much busier and that appears to be especially true today with people even standing in the vestibules. It's a stark contrast to my almost empty coach at the rear of the train. Toilets can be found in most of the train's vestibules. While they are rather poorly lit, I was pleased to find everything as it should be, clean, well stocked and in good working order, although it's disappointing to see that some people still find flushing a challenging concept. This train is Wi-Fi enabled, although personally I wouldn't bother trying to connect to it as it's so bad it'll make you want to throw your device out the window. One last thing, no catering is available on this train, so bear that in mind before starting your journey. Eventually, we find ourselves travelling through the outer reaches of the capital. Shortly after passing Wimbledon station, we pass Wimbledon Traincare Depot, which is where South Western Railway maintains the bulk of its London-based commuter trains. Our final calling point is Clapham Junction, where, once again, the train is too long for the platform. 
In terms of the number of trains, Clapham Junction is one of the busiest railway stations in Europe, with up to 180 trains per hour serving the station at peak times. On the whole, I thought Southwestern Railway's Class 444s were very good. The seats are amazing and the interiors look very nice. The only downside is the lack of space for larger items of luggage. As for the price, well, I paid just £7.75 for my advanced single, including railcard discount of a third. While this ticket was fixed to the 0907 service, for a journey of over 100 miles, I think that represents rather good value for money. For reference, the prices can vary dramatically on this route, so it really does pay to book as far in advance as possible. If you buy your ticket on the day, then expect to pay over £40 with a rail card, or about £65 without if you want to travel on this service. So overall, I was very impressed with this rather comfortable and good value service. But what did you make of it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Now all that's left for me to do is to welcome you to London Waterloo, where we arrive on time at 11.19. Okay, so just in the park across the road from London Waterloo now. Um, yeah, a rather nice journey up from Poole, and dare I say the weather's a bit better here for now at least. Um, yeah, comfortable journey. The Class 444s are generally pretty good overall. Um, it was just a bit of chaos getting out of the station at the end because I think the front of the train was really quite busy, whereas the back wasn't. Um, so a lot of people flooded the gate line at once, caused a bit of chaos as that often does. But anyway, got a couple hours here in London now, about to head over to King's Cross to catch my train back up north to Leeds. But that is a story for another day, so I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next Friday.